Hi, lovely to have you here. Welcome to the Electro Revolution channel. My name is Michael and I'm a car and tech enthusiast. Now in this episode, we're going to go through NEO's latest milestone. Now NEO is a Chinese EV brand that's hit a jaw-dropping milestone, reaching its 90 millionth battery swap. Now I don't usually take notice of announcements like this, but even I must admit that was an eye-opener and something to take notice of. Now if you haven't heard of NEO, they're a company and a vehicle manufacturer that's pioneered a technology that most people said actually wouldn't work. Battery swapping. Yep, you heard that right. Not charging, but swapping entire batteries in EV vehicles. Now let's take a step back for a second. While most of the EV world, they've been racing to build more and more fast chargers, now on highways, car parks, at home. NEO, it's taken a completely different path. Now instead of waiting 30 minutes or more to charge your car, or pushing the boundaries of high speed charging with 800 volt or 900 volt architectures, NEO drivers, all they do, they roll into a swap station, and in a few minutes, the car automatically swaps its depleted battery for a fully charged one. Now that's quick, it's seamless, and honestly, pretty good. Now, the company's founder, William Lee, he jumped on X recently to share the news. What he said, I'm thrilled to share that we just hit 90 millionth battery swap at 22.53.25 on October 26, 2025. Now that's right, 90 million swaps. Now here's an even more impressive. The last 10 million swaps only took 100 days. The first 10 million took over four years. Now that means the pace is now about 15 times faster than when they, when they started. Now there's a reason for that. And that also shows just how much demand and scale NEO has built. So to give you some perspective, as of mid 2024, NEO had around 2400 swap stations. Now we fast forward that to early 2025. And that number has quickly jumped to 3,200 stations, with more than a thousand of them sitting on highways, especially in China. Now it's not just China anymore because it's a Chinese company. NEO has now expanded into Europe. Places like Norway, they've already seen battery swap stations pop up and in use. Now their newer vehicles, NEO's newer vehicles, they can swap batteries in around three minutes which is actually faster than grabbing a cup of coffee while your EV charges, especially on road trips. Now here's where it gets interesting for us in Australia. Guess what? NEO is planning to enter the Australian market under a sub-brand called Firefly. Now if you don't know the NEO Fireflies, I'll place them up on the screen for you and you can take a look at these vehicles, they're quite nice. Now those cars, they're expected to arrive quite soon in Australia. And while technically the FiFi platform supports battery swapping, at the moment there aren't any swap stations in Australia yet and I haven't heard of any plans yet. So it's something we'll have to wait for depending on the popularity. So at least initially, we'll probably be charging them the good old fashioned way. We plug them in either at home or on DC fast charging. But who knows? If the Firefly takes off and the NEO sees potential, we might eventually see swap stations pop up across our highways too. And Firefly might just be the beginning. There are rumors that the Onvo, which is NEO's mid-range brand, that could follow and eventually even the premium NEO brand itself might make its way here to Australia. So to me, it's pretty exciting to think about. So what does this all mean? See, battery swapping is not just some futuristic concept anymore. That's, I reckon, the key point. It's real and it's proven, and it's happening at massive scale, and that, I think, was the litmus test. NEO's 90 million milestone shows that it can be done and done reliably. And as companies like NEO start expanding into more international markets like Europe, and including our one in Asia-Pac, it's only good news for EV drivers because what we get is more choice, more innovation, and many more ways that we can power up our vehicles and get back on the road. 
Now I've put together a simple question and answer type thing here because even I was a little bit skeptical when Neo first introduced battery swapping features. I started to think, how in the world is this going to take off? And you know, how is this even going to work? But when you start hitting the millionth and 10 millionth and 20 millionth and 30 millionth and now the 90 millionth swap, you've got to take notice that it is actually working because you can't do that many swaps without scale. So I've put together this Q&A section to try and cover the things that I asked myself and possibly things that you may ask while thinking of this as a service. So first and foremost, you have to know that you don't have to battery swap. You can use your vehicle like any other vehicle, a Neo Vehicle Firefly, for example. You can charge at home or charge on public charges. Swapping is not required if you're on the BAS service. You can actually do that anytime. Now, BAS meaning battery as a service. This is all battery as a service. Now, if you're on BAS and you decide any time to swap, you can. It's up to you when. Or you can just keep it running the way it is, charging it at home, charging it from solar, charging it from the power grid, or charging it on DC. It's completely up to you. So Neo essentially offers a BAS service. Now you may be wondering, why would I consider a battery swap instead of owning the battery? Well, I thought the same way, but when I really, really think about it, here's what I came up with. Number one, speed and convenience. It is ultra fast like refueling. When you take your petrol car into the service station, four to five minutes you're out. And this is exactly the service that you get with a battery swap. At the moment on the current brands, it's about four minutes. Their newer brands is about three minutes. And that's exactly what you get as a petrol uh, owner. So swapping a depleted battery for a fully charged one takes anywhere from three to five minutes. Far quicker than even the fastest DC chargers in our days. No more waiting for charging. And that's ideal for urban drivers or fleet vehicles especially that need to stay on the road without long charging stops. Think of Australia Post trucks or uh, courier services like AT&T. Or even Uber drivers that want to uh, quickly uh, charge their vehicles and get back onto the road because where they lose uh, time, they actually lose money. Number two, it lowers upfront costs. Now you may wonder, well, how in the world is this going to lower upfront costs? Now, when you buy a EV vehicle, a large majority of the cost is actually on the battery, usually about $10,000 worth of the vehicle's price, or in percentages, it's about 30 to 40% of the price of the vehicle. Now, what NEO allow you to do is they allow you to buy their cars without a battery. That brings the price down easily by about $10,000. So it significantly reduces your initial purchase price and then of course you can subscribe to the battery as a service and get the battery added. So a service type system, a lot of vehicle manufacturers are trying to implement those things, oh, VW, Mercedes, uh, Audi, those types of things. But you know the concept started with Tesla because as you know you have to pay uh, Tesla a monthly fee to get all the sentry mode and things like that and also now on the full self-driving if you haven't bought it outright you pay a monthly fee $149 I think it is in Australia and of course overseas is different but the subscription model works for those companies that um, supply value add for their particular vehicles now this is where NEO comes in this is a massive value add. If you can save yourself on the initial purchase, that means more people can afford these vehicles and pay a subscription fee for the battery. You don't actually own the battery. Now think about that. Flexible upgrades on the batteries. Now, what am I talking about here? Users, they can upgrade to higher capacity batteries later without replacing the car. For example, the BYDs I have they're fixed batteries within the vehicles. If I want to upgrade the battery or like BYD, they've released the version two of the LFP battery, which is higher density, cheaper than the ones in the uh, current model. So they call us early adopters. But nevertheless, if I wanted to get a better battery, I have no real option but to sell the vehicle and get the latest upgraded vehicle. Now that is in the best interest of BYD, obviously, because they will make more sales. 
However, it's not in my best interest because my best interest is longevity in the vehicle, keeping the vehicle running well, maintaining the vehicle and having it have a good life, at least seven to eight years at the very minimum to own a vehicle. Now, think of this, with Neo system, you don't have to buy the battery up front. You can go onto their BAS system and when new batteries are released for your car, you get them using the same monthly price that you normally pay under the service. So you don't have to worry about battery upgrades. You'll get the battery upgrades free of charge because you're part of that service. So you can go to higher capacity batteries later without replacing the car. And that's just not possible with current cars. Now, another thing to consider, you know, when we do OTA updates on our uh, EV vehicles, all of these OTA updates, usually they're packaged uh, periodically and they're packaged quite large. So you typically go through a one hour process to upgrade all the firmware within the vehicle and even the firmware controllers that monitor the battery, the way it works, uh, heating components and all of this other stuff. Now, again, with this type of thing, you don't even need to worry about firmware updates on the battery packs or the controllers because that's actually done at NEO. So it'll actually save you time. It becomes very adaptable when you actually perform OTA updates on the vehicle. They become a lot shorter. And, you know, if you haven't seen OTA updates on the BYD, I'll put some of the previous videos up on the screen now. You can check them out. They do take a long time, at least 100, 100 minutes usually is what's detected. It's at least an hour, 60 minutes. And then, of course, however long it takes after that to keep rebooting the console and keep you know, performing the upgrade and then going through any other additional updates after the OTA update is finished. So it does take time. Now, in this particular case, what we get is software updates and, and diagnostics all performed by NIA at the swap station. So that's centrally managed, something you don't have to worry about. And also a big one here is battery health and life cycle management. That comes with centralized maintenance. Essentially, you're swapping the batteries out regularly. They're being inspected and maintained by NEO, and that ensures better performance and longevity for those batteries that you don't have to worry about at home, charging your own vehicle by doing this and worrying about, oh, is it going to 20%? Do I charge it to 80%? Do I drop it to 10%? Do I do the uh, leveling of the batteries? None of that you have to worry about. That becomes Neo's problem because you're paying for a service and they now manage the battery. And if the battery stuffs up, they replace it. You don't have to do anything about it. You just keep getting new refreshed batteries. And what that also means is reduced degradation risk because drivers, they're not stuck with a degrading battery over time, which is something like I'm stuck with and other Tesla owners are stuck with and other other. MG owners are stuck with and all sorts of manufacturers, anyone that doesn't have this battery swap technology. Each swap, it gives access to a fresh and well-maintained unit. Now think of the likelihood also of a damaged battery being inserted into the car. That's quite low because it won't be in the best interest of Neo to do that. So this might even mean if you accidentally damage a battery, now don't hold me on this, but if you damage it with a minor damage, maybe some rock pebbles or something like that that's bounced up off the road and damaged the uh, underside under the shielding, even if it's by accident, of course, then the next swap you get a refreshed battery without needing to do a warranty claim on the battery. That's an important thing to also realize. Now here's one for our grid. Sustainability and grid optimization. What's this mean? It means when NEO organized the charging of these uh, batteries within their swap stations, they can do that during off-peak hours. And that helps balance our grid. And that helps with grids in every single country. So what that means is when, uh, when there's heaps of uh, extra capacity and electricity within our grid, that can be used uh, to charge the uh, NEO batteries that they have in storage or when it's uh, completely off peak hours and they can charge at the cheaper rates, that's when they'll organize to do it. And this is all done centrally without putting such a huge demand on the uh, electricity grid within our states and within our countries. 
Now, the next thing to consider, battery recycling and reuse. Now, every battery eventually dies. If you know you've got a home battery or a you know, mobile phone battery or any type of these batteries, eventually they'll reach their cycle limit and they'll die and need to be replaced. Now, this is something that normally as an owner of a vehicle, you know, there's, you know, EVs have, are still essentially quite new vehicles. So we haven't really gone through the rounds of uh, many of the LFP batteries and NMC batteries reaching end of life. But one day we will. And when that happens, what do we do? We're going to have to get, either get a new car or get a new battery and have these batteries put into recycling 99% or 99.9% they can now recycle LFP batteries and it, it's called black mass that's another another topic I don't need to talk about here but what that means is if we're doing this then that could be NEO performing this recycling and they can organize it all centrally without having us as a vehicle owner to worry about it that essentially means easier end of life uh, management of the batteries and the responsibility being put on NEO to perform this work. And lastly, what I would have to say here, and this I guess is for NEO if they if they if they're watching a video like this, at the moment NEO will do the battery swaps for NEO vehicles. Now, what I have to say about that, if NEO is listening, of course, is that's what Tesla used to do. If you remember with the charging station. But what happened over the years? Tesla decided to open them up to non-Teslas. And Tesla is making more money now on this than it ever has. So as a large majority of the vehicles using Tesla charging stations, they're actually non-Tesla vehicles now. So what should NEO do in this case? At the moment, you get a battery swap station specifically for NEO vehicles. Now that's a huge investment for NEO to keep performing this and rolling it out, especially as they go international. So NEO, maybe they should think about doing the same thing that Tesla did. Open sourcing its battery mounting system so other vendors can use it in their vehicles completely free of charge and then offering the best service to non-NEO owners. Think about that. NEO, you can use that ID for free from me completely at no charge, but that would essentially increase the uptake of battery swap technology and increase the uptake of EVs, which essentially helps everyone. It helps us, it helps our communities, it helps the environment, it helps the grid. Um, think of the other things you can do with this, you know, without me covering every single thing. I'll just give you an example. For example, vehicle to grid uh, technology. Now I will be releasing a video at some stage talking about the new vehicle to grid stuff that's coming. Uh, there's manufacturers now that are uh, producing these for uh, for the entire public. What that means is you can actually take your EV to a public vehicle to grid charging station and export the charge of your vehicle to the grid and get paid for it. This stuff is happening. Now imagine if you had a NEO vehicle that did this, a battery swap system that did this. You could do the vehicle to grid, you could do the vehicle to home, go back to NEO's uh, swap station and perform the swap and then go through the whole process rinse and repeat I can see huge value in this now that brings us to the end of the video please share your thoughts on what you think Neo has been doing historically Neo is doing currently your thoughts on the tech like would you rather charge your EV or swap the battery in three minutes and don't forget if you like this video please give us a thumbs up it really all helps videos like this especially organically it grows within the YouTube algorithms. Or just share this content with someone who'd be interested. Anyway, until the next time, until the next video, or until the next series, I hope to see you then. Bye for now.